Hi, I'm Vernon L. Bowling, and welcome to another edition of Focus. As I hope you know, Focus has been on the air for over 40 years. We've been continuing to bring you the African American community problems, accomplishments, as well as successes that we've had within the African American community. Don't touch that remote. Matter of fact, you can get your pencils or papers together and write down some information that we're going to give to you that's going to be very important that you probably can use later. We'll be right back with more focus after these messages. Little things that might seem simple could have such a big impact. I'm putting my effort towards an outcome. You have to put effort into it to be part of a community. When you play the lottery, your money stays here in Arizona. It actually goes back to your community. You're helping out your state. The last time we met, we talked about Black Lives Matter. And we had a very interesting conversation with uh, Pastor Reginald Walton. Well, this week, we're gonna be talking about Black Arts Matter. And we're gonna be talking with two people who have a very pivotal role in making sure that this month, Black History Month, is filled with incredible, exciting things. So with me is someone I've known since she was a little girl. <laughs> and that is Dr. Tamika Sanders. And Dr. Sanders, thank you, first of all, for, for being here. And if I slip and call you Tamika, it's because that's what I'm so used to calling you. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> so let, let's get started because uh, we have so much uh, role to cover, and we may have Dr. Nia Witherspoon joining us later. later. But tell me, what, what, what are you all doing, and why did you start this Black Arts Matter? Um, well, Black Arts Matter, I be, being an artist in the community, it was uh, when I found out about the project, um, uh, performance in the Borderlands with Mary Stevens and then also Dr. Nia Weatherspoon, it came about because she was going to be bringing the America's play, which is Susan Laurie Parks, mm -hmm. um, one of her very famous plays about a lot of the problems and um, kind of themes that, that are going on between people, the government, uh, which really is kind of Wow, just resonating right now with everything going on. Mm -hmm. And so and we're going to be talking hopefully yes. with her later on about mm -hmm. that. And so that idea, we didn't just want to bring um, just that play. We were like, well, you know what? February, it's black history, but also this is art. Why don't we also bring in this other movement instead of just having this one thing? It's here for two weeks, it's gone. Let's put some other events around it. And that's so, when they reached out to me. So, and they reached out to you. Mm -hmm. And I, I know you mm -hmm. um, as a poet, mm -hmm. a writer, mm -hmm. and as a storyteller yeah. as well, mm -hmm. because we've done some collaborations mm -hmm. together. So, why do you think, why was this of interest to you? Other than the the fact that you are an artist, but mm -hmm. why was this particular project of interest to you? When I think about the arts, um, ever since I've been little and, and writing and doing and acting and doing theater, art and black art especially, it spoke to me in a way that traditional maybe education or just other things sometimes can't. Art has a way of reaching reaching people in, in ways that sometimes words, just normal everyday words, uh, our books can't do. And so when I think about people like Zora Neale Hurston and Langston Hughes, and I think about that whole uh, Harlem Renaissance movement, that inspired me because that was, for, for black people and for America, that was our consciousness. It was our way of saying, hey, we are here, we matter, and this is our contribution to the world. And so for that reason alone, I, it's, it's something that I celebrate in my own work when I do um, with my company, Savvy Pen, is bringing in the arts into education and then bringing it back to the community. So that, hence my slogan, um, blending arts, education, and community. So this project is a, is a pivotal piece of that. So um, what kinds of things or contributions do you see yourself making here in the arts mm -hmm. in, in this particular community? Uh, already so far, uh, what I and you've been a part of some of the the great things. Um, we did uh, the Harriet Tubman series where we had second and fourth graders um, come in and, and learn about Harriet Tubman, but not just learn the historical parts. Thinking again, adding arts and bringing in the community, they learned a slave, a slavery to freedom, or enslaved. Um, 
enslaved from, Africans. Yeah, mm -hmm. enslaved Africans to freedom. They learned to dance that symbol, uh, symbolized that. They learned the message behind songs like Wade in the Water. They learned how to make freedom quilts and what that meant. So my contribution to this is one, is making sure that the workshops we do are, are speaking to not just the pivotal pieces about black arts movement, but then how are we incorporating that into our everyday lives and then taking it further because it is a movement. Uh, it's not just, hey, this is art and it's fun, but it has a consciousness. And what do we want it to say? Uh, and how do we want it to move people? So now they've taken arts out of the schools. Mm -hmm. um, they've taken um, so yeah, many things. <laughs> yeah, a, a, quite a number of things. Language, pretty much, <laughs> almost all the uh, ethnic studies out yes. of the schools here yes. in Arizona. Uh, how do you see, and, and you're in the mm -hmm. schools, mm -hmm. do you see the impact? taking art out of the schools have had on the students or on the community? Yeah, it, um, when people, and, and I love the, the new STEM movement, the science, uh, science, technology, engineering, math, that's what the STEM stands and for. And now they're making it STEAM, STEAM so right. they're putting that A in there for arts because they're realizing that when you take it out, you would never have a doctor thinking about cutting people open uh, or you know someone dreaming to go to the moon, which is science, if it wasn't for creativity. And creativity is where the arts come in. And if you take that out, the regular kind of traditional English, math, science, it just doesn't, it doesn't have the same uh, way to transcend learning beyond the classroom. That's, that's the best way to do it because they learn it, they forget it, and it's gone. Whereas if you can, you add art in there, they have a way to make it their own, to, to really express it in different ways than just a test or pen and a paper. And, um, so we're seeing that there are a lot of students that are just that are just not interested. They're bored. They are not understanding the information. They are again dropping out. Um, but it's just this disinterest in the actual educational process because they're they just feel like they're what they're learning doesn't mean anything to them and they can't apply it to their to their everyday life. Well, do you see Arizona mm -hmm. specifically because this is where we are? Can you see Arizona making that change again, going back into the arts? Do you see anything in that movement? Um, in the education system that lends to the art being brought back into the schools, other than STEAM, right. which is, <laughs> which <laughs> is good yes. and, and, and important and necessary mm -hmm. in what we have now. Yeah. But, but as an educator, and as one who develops curriculum, yeah. what do you see the school moving toward? It, it's funny because certain schools are choosing to try and bring in arts, um, but they're only doing it in certain disciplines. Like um, like English is easy because they'll do creative writing, um, or but they're not bringing it into like science and math and other places where it can also be just as beneficial. Um, and then instead of schools bringing it in, you see schools like um, Arizona, um, like ASA Arizona School, School for the Arts. School for the Arts. Mm -hmm. You see kind of either charter or private schools kind of bringing that in into their curriculum or making it a school that that's what they're about versus, versus it being available to the public, which I think hurts the public schools so for the people that Is there discussion? Are they talking? I mean, when you're sitting in on these uh, curriculum mm -hmm. meetings, is this mm -hmm. something that the teachers in the, in the um, administrators are talking about no. at least? What's funny is they talk about student engagement, but when they go back to student engagement, they completely don't dismiss the arts as a part of a way to engage them. They're thinking of different learning styles, different uh, pedagogy, they're thinking, they're, that's what they're thinking of instead of taking it back to simple things like art and letting students express what they know in different ways versus a test or an essay, um, versus it being like a presentation or a multimedia thing or a play or a poem. Well, can you see Black Arts Matter having an impact on making this change? I mean, um, mm -hmm. you have Black Lives Matter, and mm -hmm. their whole thing is mm -hmm. to um, is to work on how police are interacting yes. with the community. Mm -hmm. Well, Black Arts Matter, other than the, the incredible events that we see will mm -hmm. be happening as a result of, of mm -hmm. this, can you see it as a movement? Or do you, do you see it as a movement? And is this movement gonna be pivotal in uh, making some changes in how education is delivered mm -hmm. in the state of Arizona? I definitely, my hope is that it becomes a movement, that it becomes just as vibrant as the Black Lives Movement because they both go hand in hand. And then starting that conversation, getting youth involved and, have, and challenging them to use um, 
art in a different kind of way and kind of show that, hey, we want this, we need this, and here's why. I think that's a big push to say it matters and it works. And there's lots of research to go behind it that show how arts improve lives and enhance. But that's going to be, there needs to be more artists at the table and in these discussions with schools when they're planning curriculum, when they're doing uh, public policy changes. and because usually we're not in there. Unless we are educators, um, like myself, I'm an educator and I'm an artist, that conversation is not, I'm usually one of the few people that brings it up and says, hey, here's a way to get student engagement. Let's try this versus, you know, kind of the old school ways of doing things. One of the exciting things that I, that I um, see with Black Arts Matter right now at this moment is, um, we had a meeting mm -hmm. recently, mm -hmm. and it was it was it was wonderful because it brought to me the information about the different activities that will be happening yeah. this month. Mm -hmm. But one of the questions I had mm -hmm. was, okay, so now we have February. What's yes. happening in March? What's happening yes. in April? And when I said that, it was like everybody was ready in, with all of these incredible things that are going right. to be happening mm -hmm. in March, uh -huh. April. And, and, and out. Mm -hmm. Can we talk a little bit about mm -hmm. what's happening this month? What types mm -hmm. of activities are happening? And I'm looking forward to talking to Dr. Witherspoon, <laughs> who is here, and yes. I'm, I'm just really excited about talking with her mm -hmm. about um, the play, mm -hmm. um, um, the America, America play, mm -hmm. and, um, and other things that she's doing mm -hmm. with um, um, performance mm -hmm. in the Borderlands. Mm -hmm. But tell me what's happening with February. So, okay, so uh, the big thing, the, the kickoff will be the 19th, the 19th, 20th, and 21st. That'll be the opening of the America's Play. Um, I am so lucky with Savvy Penn. We are hosting a workshop with Cassandra Nicholson on the Sunday, the 21st, and that's going to be about for film writers and people that want to tell their story. Because uh, we know there's not a lot of stories about people of color and how do you get started, how do you get into it. So she's going to go into that, and that's open free to the public at Burton Bar. There is um, uh, Black Poet Ventures is going to be doing almost like a, a fun community open mic style thing where they're going to actually ha let people bring their favorite um, kind of black arts poems, whether it's Langston Hughes, Zora, whatever, and actually read those. They'll have music, so it'll be a fun open performance style. Um, and where will that be held? That will be, I think that's February. No, oh. but where? aware they are still working on the location okay for that. because yeah. what we're going to have what we're going to have for you is a calendar yes. by the time this is all done we'll have a calendar <laughs> and you'll be able to see all of the dates and all the Definitely. activities so that you can schedule it on your calendar yes, there. But, yeah <laughs> please be there uh, so there's a great panel that you're a part of mm -hmm. uh, that's going to be on the 20th uh, on the 20th 25th, Fifth. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's going to be, I know, <laughs> if we get our dates wrong, don't yeah. us. <laughs> there's so much going on. Yeah. Um, that's uh, Tia Oso, that's a big person in the Black Lives Matter, that mm -hmm. actually was the one that stood up in the conference when Bernie Sanders was here and said, hey, we matter, You're not. we're not letting you leave this conference without addressing this. Exactly. Um, there's the Spoken Word series where she will also, at the beginning of that, have like about an hour um, to, to talk about Black Lives Matter and what they're doing. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then not including our event, we've got Viola Davis coming as part of the ASU uh, kind of Center for the Study of Race and Democracy, their, their lecture on democracy. Mm -hmm. And um, so there's there's so many amazing things. Yeah, Anita that, Pointer coming yeah, as well, one of the Pointer yeah, the Sisters Pointer is coming. Sisters, right. uh, Fences, a great show by August Wilson is and going yes, on. From the Phoenix, so. um, at the uh, Arizona Theater uh, Company mm -hmm. is doing that. So there's, there's so many movements and things going on that are outside of even our events that we're doing that we want to make sure that people are plugged into. Um, and and, and mm -hmm. before she goes any further, I, I hear a lot because I'm one of the ones that say it, that there's really nothing happening in Phoenix. <laughs> well, that's slowly becoming something that we can't say it anymore. Is. And we can't use uh, an excuse that there's nothing going on anymore because yes. there is. Sometimes so if you don't much. show up, right. it's not on us, yeah. it's, on you. it's on you. So go ahead. Yeah, and sometimes now there's too many things going on. So you're so gonna never too to many. It's yeah, never too go. many, and never you'll, too you'll many. You'll get to pick and choose what you want. Yeah. Lots of activities and we're going to be building a website thanks to Leah uh, Marche with Black Poet Ventures we'll have that we've got the Facebook page so stay updated go to the Facebook page it's Black, Black Arts, Arts Matters Matter. and or or performance in the borderline either one of those will get you to that page so that you can stay plugged in because as we find things we're adding them to that so again it's a community page and you and you may also members. have something that you might want to even include because exactly. maybe we don't Send know we don't in, know yeah. everything mm -hmm. you know we know almost everything but right. not everything <laughs> 
<laughs> well, you know what? Thank you so much. I, I, I'm so looking forward to not only participating, but, but going to some of these events. I mean, I have my calendar is so filled, and I'm going to try and make every single one right. that I possibly can as long as they're not happening on the same day. But thank you so much, Dr. Sanders, for joining thank us. You. And when we come back, we'll be talking to Dr. Nia Witherspoon, another very critical player in this Black Arts Matter movement. Come back. Little things that might seem simple could have such a big impact. I'm putting my effort towards an outcome. You have to put effort into it to be part of a community. When you play the lottery, your money stays here in Arizona. It actually goes back to your community. You're helping out your state. Now for another moment in black history. Langston Hughes was born February 1st, 1902 in Joplin, Missouri. Langston was raised by his grandmother until he was 13 and moved to live with his mother in Cleveland, Ohio, where he began writing poetry. In November, 1924, Hughes moved to Washington, D.C. and two years later, he wrote his first book of poetry the Weary Blues. Hughes finished his college education at Lincoln University. And in 1930, his first novel, Not Without Laughter, won the Harmon Gold Medal for Literature. Langston wrote novels, short stories, and plays, as well as poetry, and is also known for his engagements with the world of jazz and the influence it had on his writings, as in the montage of a dream deferred. Unlike other notable black poets of the period, Hughes refused to differentiate between his personal experience and the common experience of black America. Langston wanted to tell stories of black people in ways that reflected their actual culture, including both their suffering and their love of music, laughter, and language itself. Langston Hughes, born February 1st, 1902, died May 22nd, 1967. Thanks for coming back. I'm Fatima Halim, and you are watching The Focus Show. And earlier on, we were talking about Black Arts Matter with Dr. Tamika Sanders. And now we have Dr. Nia Witherspoon, Assistant Professor of Theater at Arizona State University. And I'm excited because Dr. Witherspoon has a show that opened in New York recently. You have a show in New York. Yeah, um, so it's a, this was an excerpted feature from a play called You Mine. Um, it was in the Fire that. This Time Festival, mm -hmm. um, and it, um, it featured seven black playwrights to complicate the voices of black theater with emerging voices. Um, my play was about um, a woman named Saida who worked at a senior living facility, mm -hmm. and the, her patient, Mrs. Anderson, had dementia. Um, and somehow remembered Saida as her slave named Sable. Okie dokie. Called Saida Sable. The way did you come up with that concept? I mean, what, a, what an interesting concept. <laughs> I think that mental health is a very simple way of describing the incredible expanse of our subconscious and that there's possibility for racialized memory, ancestral memory, and intergenerational trauma. Now, you know I'm from New York, so I need to tell my folks where in New York, and those, of, and those people who are going to New York, and some of you are going to New York, where's your play being um, shown? So You Mine was at the Crane Theater. Unfortunately, it just closed on um, Saturday. It, had, ah. it was sold out, and they did an additional show after it to accommodate the rest of the people that were around the corner, cool. which we were so thrilled about. It was running for three weeks, but it's nice. closed now. Okay. Um, so they, I, we'll get that back. Maybe we'll bring it here or something. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> there's an option for feeding. But now you have another one. I do. And I do. What, what, tell me about that one. That one is called The Messiah Complex. Um, it will be that in... It sounds common <laughs> or, or, fam or familiar. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's graspable, right? Yeah. At least initially. Um, 
It'll be in May at Brick House in Brooklyn. Okay. And it follows the story of um, a gender non-conforming teenager, masculine of center, born a woman, um, who is the child of two Black Panthers, and asks the question, what does it mean to inherit the legacy of the Panthers for my generation, mm -hmm. in addition for, to, for women and for queer folks? Well, this is wonderful. Wonderful. Maybe we can get that one here too. So that's, I would uh, love it. That sounds. I, I don't see what the problem would be. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I don't know, Phoenix. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I, I don't see why not. Okay. Now you're part of the Black Arts Matter movement, and I'm going to call it a movement. I like and that. It, it may be just be a Black Arts Matter month, <laughs> but I'm going to call it a movement because it can't stop. Mm -hmm. How did you get involved in that? Um, well, I. So it started, really, I started kind of thinking about this idea of Black Arts Matter um, when Black Lives Matter was happening in terms of thinking of that in that language, right? Of course, as a black artist, I already believe Black Arts Matter. Mm -hmm. But there was a way in which I felt like, um, okay, our movements for political and for juridical sovereignty and justice also need to be really, really focused on the potentiality of arts as a resource in our communities mm -hmm. in, in a much more um, explicit way. Mm -hmm. um, and so I just, um, I began talking about that idea with folks. I was attending different conferences at the time. Um, one of them, which was at University of Arizona, the Black Life Matters conference, mm -hmm. and that kind of really inspired me. Um, I went to an event called, um, that was the anniversary of this bridge called My Back, mm -hmm. um, which is the Radical Women of Color anthology edited by Sri Moraga and Gloria Ansaldua, um, that really kind of, um, where Alicia, and I saw Alicia Garza speak there, to how much that book created the psychic space. So that book, which is a collection of art, poetry, mm -hmm. narrative by black women, Chicano women, Asian women, Native American women, how that created the groundwork, the visioning, the psychic space from which Black Lives Matter, which was founded by three black queer women, to, to imagine that movement, right? Black Arts Matter. Black Lives Matter. Oh, Black Lives Matter, oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Black okay. Arts Matter is just a phrase I came up with okay. to, to make this kind of intervention right, okay. into the Black Lives Matter movement. But that was one of the kind of moments that inspired me was hearing Alicia Garza, one of the founders of Black Lives Matter, I talk about that role of art. And I was just like, all right, that's it. That's it, like something needs to happen. So between the ASU Black, or uh, University of Arizona Black Life Matters Conference, that bridge event, and kind of my own searching for, as a traveling artist and scholar, like how, what is my contribution? What is my role in this movement? So I love that you're calling it a movement, mm -hmm. um, you know, how, how can that happen? So I, I so then I just started having conversations with folks, and Mary Stevens was one of the people who um, helped me take up and pick up that idea and and put it on the ground where I was at the time, which was yeah. Phoenix. Yeah, she's doing some remarkable work with performance in Borderlands. Absolutely um, remarkable. Program, so I'm really looking forward to maybe even bringing Mary on the show to talk more about that. Uh, so let's talk about um, art as a resource in the communities. You know, you, you, you mentioned that, and I know that um, Tamika, Dr. Sanders also mentioned that. So w what is it that you see? Uh, how do you see that happening or, or um, making that happen? Mm. Um, well, I think you all touched on some of it already, which is that um, art is a crucial, crucial place to be in education. Mm -hmm and that it is an underrepresented place, that it's being taken out of schools, and that is an absolutely necessary place. And the reason for me that it's necessary is because, um, and for me, I'll, I'll make, so, so as to not repeat some of what's already been said, I'll just make the connection to uh, black art. Um, for me, art is not only necessary for everyone, for every human being, but for black folks particularly. Um, I think any time that you have a group of people that is, um, constructed in the, psych, in, the, in the imagination, the way that blackness is, like as the demon, as the thing to be feared, as the thing to be policed, as the thing to be criminalized. Um, there's a certain level of changes that can happen at policy and at law, but that the, the real change happens on the level of the subconscious, mm -hmm. and that's where art happens. That's where art comes from, and that's where art hits, right? And so I, I believe that that's really, it's, its biggest resource in terms of making social change um, is just at that level of really, really changing uh, the underground of perception, not, not necessarily what we think of as on the conscious level. So I, I, I'm gonna have to, to go here with this because um, I travel a lot. I, I totally enjoy it because I, I grow, I learn, I experience. And one of the things, I'm gonna go shoot straight to Brazil right now, mm -hmm. I'm gonna go straight to Bahia. Mm -hmm. And 
everywhere you go, in Cuba, it's the same way. Everywhere I went, the, the, the paintings, the music, the festivals all reflected the culture. So the art was, uh, there was no separation. Right. It's yeah. like, it's, it's what it is. Right. And you know, you see these wonderful paintings are there of the Orisha or something that's relative to mm -hmm. the culture. Uh, uh, can you speak a little bit uh, uh, on, on that? I would love to, I'm so glad you brought that up. Yeah, so that's, so my reason one is, is changing the, the subconscious structure in terms of what blackness kind of represents. Um, but then the other thing is that in black culture, black culture is what Yvonne Daniel calls, and she does work in Haiti, Brazil, Cuba. It's performance dependent. It, it's not, exactly. it's, it's, there's, not, there's not this idea of, um, of a life that's outside of art making. In fact, that in fact it is, is crucial and essential to our being, our very being, our life, our, um, our ways of knowing, mm -hmm. right? Like that uh, in the West, a dance, you go to a dance and you see the dance and the dance is itself, whereas if you are in Bahia, you go to the dance and then the dance brings the Orisha down right. and then the Orisha is going to tell you about your life. Exactly. So, so is there anything else that you think that you might want to say to the folks before we go? We got about a couple of minutes left, so is there anything else that you think that we haven't touched on that you want to make sure is heard? Mm. Um, I just want to say thank you to you. Oh. Uh, I know you're a pillar in this community, and I'm very oh. appreciative that you're giving oh, space for you. us to talk about our work in this way. I think that intergenerational connections like this mm -hmm. are part of one of the major, major keys, and in addition to the art stuff, it's one of the major things Absolutely. lacking. So Absolutely. Um, I just wanted to say thank you. And I do appreciate when the younger generation do give um, at least some Op uh, open a door for us to walk through because we can't do it without one another and we right. have so much to teach each other and I'm still learning from you and I'm certainly have enough to give back mm. that I'm more than honored and happy to do so thank you so much for joining us thank yeah. you thank you please come out to all the events there you go and, and <laughs> we do want to see you and, and if you don't come it's okay <laughs> but just don't complain all right <laughs> so thanks for joining us on focus and we'll see you next time Thank you for joining us for another edition of Focus. And if you'd like to contact us, if there's a topic you'd like to see us present or someone you'd like us to talk to, the information is right up on the screen. So thank you for joining us. We'll see you next week. Same station, same time, and Focus continues.